Well, the curious thing about the brain is that it's hiding in plain sight. Sooner or later, humans have to confront the fact that we don't know how the brain works. The Brain Mapping Center in Los Angeles offers its customers powerful brain imaging technologies. High-power magnetic scanners have become an invaluable diagnostic tool and produce images to marvel at. But leading neuroscientists are saying, if you think these technologies reveal how the brain works, think again. We do a great deal of neuroimaging today, CAT scanning and MEG and EEG and so on. And all of this imaging today is substantially blind to the true connectional anatomy of the human brain. You cannot take normal subjects and open up their head to look at their brains. That's not practical. You have to look at it with the technologies that you have. And, and by doing that, you're one step removed from reality. Within a square millimeter of the brain, a dense maze of millions of neurons may be firing away. To depict this process with animation and computer graphics is one thing. To capture the reality has been a daunting challenge. Every single neuron, pretty much, is unique, has its own wiring diagram. And that is there's no simple redundancy of just having a lot of the same unit. And that's why the brain has been so much more intractable to understand than other organ systems. The connectivity of the brain is crucial to its function. All of the operation of the brain occurs upon a substrate of its physical connections. Jeff Lichtman and his colleagues at Harvard University have been pioneering techniques for brain circuit imaging. One of the fundamental questions that has plagued the field of neurobiology, which is what is the physical substrate of memory? Where is your memory of your grandmother in your brain? In what form does it sit? What is the physical instantiation of your grandmother? A lot of people would say it is a wiring diagram. Neuroscientists at Harvard are perfecting a technology which they hope one day will map a human memory. This scanning electron microscope has been imaging neural pathways of mice and rats from slices of their brains. This is a half of a rat brain that has been fixed with chemical fixatives and embedded in plastic so that it can be sectioned very thin. And the piece of kit doing the brain slicing is called an automatic tape-collecting lathe ultramicrotome. In order for an electron microscope to trace neural circuits, it has to be able to see those neural circuits on the surface. This assembly line brain slicer requires a spool of film with an electric charge to attract and secure the ultra-thin slices. So these slices are on the order of about 30 nanometers in thickness. And to put that in perspective, human hair is about 50,000 nanometers in thickness. I believe we want to look at the smallest resolution, every last bit of it. This is a brain, this is that hippocampus part of the brain of a rodent, and that's the size of one of these sections. They're really massive for the electron microscope. That's the slab that these images came out of. Uh, so we've magnified up here uh, many thousands of times to get images like this. This object here, this little circle, is about 40 nanometers in diameter. That's 400 hydrogen atoms wide, so it's pretty small. This is a synapse. At high power is basically the ground truth of, of what's in there. So now you're looking now at full resolution at all the synapses in one very, very small part of that big data set. Because of the density of neurons, inventive strategies are required to clearly see and trace pathways. You can trace out one process over a long distance. In this instance, one of Jeff Lichtman's students meticulously colored by hand the individual neural fibers. Pick up off of that. And once you do that, then it's not hard to do it for lots of processes in the same data set. Getting a wiring diagram has been uh, 
conflicted with the reality of the way the brain is made, which is a bunch of wires that are translucent and all look basically the same. The real event that changed everything was this remarkable discovery that uh, there is a protein inside jellyfish that's fluorescent, the green fluorescent protein. The gene for it can be put into other animals to make cells in other animals also fluorescent. Lichtman and his colleagues designed a strategy which introduced three separate colors of jellyfish proteins that would activate as a mouse brain develops. Their objective was to use the colors to distinguish and trace the notoriously dense and translucent patchwork of neurons. We scan the uh, image, the slide that we're looking at, with a single color to get the red channel. And so we see the red channel show up, and then we turn on the blue channel. We scan the blue channel, and it just fills in blue on top of the red. And we noticed, oh my goodness, there's not only red and blue cells, but there's also a few purple cells. And then the green channel came on, and then suddenly we had this amazing number of colors. The mixing and matching of only three different proteins produced over 80 different hues. So we have this enormous mixture of colors. I can tell you our jaws literally dropped. They're just going, huh? <laughs> the creatures with a technicolor brain became known as the rainbow mice. So this is the part of the auditory system, very big wires because this information has to come in very quickly so the brain can tell the difference between the speed at which information came into the left ear and the right ear. That's the way we localize sounds in space. And all this movement you're seeing is really just the wires as we're moving down through the depth of the section. This is the cerebral cortex in the same transgenic line of mice. Uh, and in this case, what really matters is what's going on between these cells where they're connected. So if we zoom up higher, these big things are the nerve cell bodies, the cell bodies of uh, all the neurons in this part of the brain. But what you see, it's just completely overwhelmed by millions and millions of little wires going in all directions. You look at the brain of a mouse, you're already looking at a structure that's a half a billion years old. If a mouse brain is that, the, the complexity of, the, of then the monkey brains and the human brains, you just put your head in your hands and say, I can't believe I'm ever going to live long enough to, to make sense out of this. Inspired by the Human Genome Project, in which geneticists produced a complete map of human DNA, neuroscientists armed with powerful new brain imaging technologies are daring to think the unthinkable to produce a complete roadmap of all the neural pathways of a human brain. It's being called the Human Connectome Project. We don't have the connectome yet. We are working on that. What effect it has in terms of how we study and understand the human brain, I think we all have high hopes. A connectome, or wiring diagram, has the potential to provide invaluable insights into human development and the root causes of some psychiatric disorders. You can look at every aspect of human neuroscience and, turn, and, and have another killer app. You have schizophrenia, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder. Then you have the classical medical applications. You know, uh, hitting the head with a baseball bat or, or an improvised explosive device. Uh, what functional deficits will result from the brain trauma? Will there be one? I think that these techniques that give us slightly larger scale projections between parts of the nervous system will be invaluable for many, many questions. Uh, and maybe in an immediate way more uh, health relevant than the minutia of a true connectome, as I would call it. Sooner or later, humans have to confront the fact that we don't know how the brain works. And if you want to understand that, you have to look at the wiring diagrams of the interconnections between cells. That's going to happen. This is uh, a superconducting research scanner that's about five times as strong as a clinical scanner. The research labs of Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston are the playground for computational biologist Van Wedeen. 
His goal is to program a new breed of powerful magnetic scanners that can be fine-tuned to detect the movement of water molecules along neural pathways. Water diffusion refers to the random thermal motion of water molecules. This is not the motion of water because it's being in the circulatory system being pumped by the heart. But in a tissue that contains fibers, like the brain or in muscle tissue, diffusion is faster parallel to the fibers than it is across them because water molecules can go a farther distance before they bump into something accidentally. Relative preference of water diffusion for one direction compared to another direction tells you which way the fibers are pointing. The whole diffusion uh, series of approaches in MR is relatively new compared to other approaches in MR and is evolving at an extremely fast rate. The new approach, called diffusion MRI, is expected to play a pioneering role in the early stages of a human brain connectome. You can't really use the microscopic approach to figure out the large components of the human brain. You, know, you need the ecological satellites in orbit to look at the entire Amazon basin and you need troops uh, you know, on the ground counting ants and mites. It's, it's, it's not that they're co competitive, it's that they're all we have. We wish we had more. Diffusion MRI promises a macroscopic insight into neuroanatomy. Imaging experiments conducted by colleagues of Wudin offered a first chance to road test his new mathematical formulae. I said, well, you know, you should really try this uh, more advanced diffusion technique that uh, I've hatched. When that first image came back, that was one jaw-dropping uh, moment. There has never been any other image on the planet that has shown the three-dimensional connectional anatomy of a brain before. Now the, the cerebellum is on the far right, and you see the tree-like structure. The blue fibers at the top left are the visual pathway. The green and red fibers in the center are hippocampal. It's strange to think about how much we've learned in the last two years. In fact, in the last two months. A very fundamental question in biology is whether reductionism or holism is the ultimate answer uh, to the things that we most want to understand. Questions like what is life? What is consciousness? Do we understand that by breaking it down to its particles? Or do we understand it by integrating the particles up into something more grand? Our objective is not just to see stuff people have seen before, we're trying to see stuff that has never been seen before. This mapping project, very much like the Hubble Telescope deep space mapping project where you're cataloging a huge amount of information with the hopes that that catalog will provide insights in the case of Hubble telescope with our origins as a planet uh, and in the case of the human connectome uh, one might think the origins of our consciousness of who we are would come out of this.